Uh, today we're back with Dr. Savage, uh, the University of Mobile, and uh, well, a, a couple thoughts about our last talk. I noticed one continuous subject, you kept bringing up vision, and how important it was in uh, leadership, that you had to have an established vision, and then that you would follow that through, and that, that faith would be in, incorporated in that, and your faith would lead that way, but I guess my question to you now is, if we're going a little deeper, is how does one come upon that vision? How does one find the vision that they have, and it, it'd be a stable vision to follow. How about we talk about what, where people get vision first, and then I'm going to give you what I think scripturally we see where we get vision. Um, you know, if a person, if a leader doesn't have vision, how does he know where to go? Has he lead to lead the church? Has he lead the organization? He has, to, he or she has to have vision to see. Very few people are able to do this, by the way. But, all Christians should be able to do it. Not about lost people, but all Christians should be able to do it. And I'll talk to you why in just a moment. But oftentimes people get their vision because it's there. Hey, why are we doing what we're doing? That's because this is what we do. This is what we've always done. Right? We see this oftentimes with churches or well-established companies. It's just kind of going through the motions. Um, we Sometimes people get vision from duplicating success, the copycat culture. You know, uh, we talked about this in the last video. Uh, in, in the NFL or, or or college football or whatever, if an offense all of a sudden starts being successful, then other people try to implement that. They duplicate success. If a church is successful in the suburbs of Atlanta, then a church in Mississippi will turn around and try to duplicate that. And that's not the, you know, that's a way to get vision, but it's not the right way to get vision necessarily. Another is um, pride. You know, hey, I want to be noted. So my vision is to, to be known. My vision is to have the, a large number of people following me on Twitter. My vision might be, hey, you know, I want to pastor the such and such church or I want a such and such position in the corporation. Again, that's a way to get vision, but it's not necessarily the biblical way to get vision. Um, vision can come from need, right? Here's a community in the neighborhood. They have a certain need. This church can provide for that need, so they let that form their vision and be what they do for the year or for the next uh, outreach event or something. Nothing wrong with that. But again, is that the right biblical baseline for where to get vision? Another is what's available resources. We talked about this in this, the previous video of letting the, the how dictate the what. And that's, you know, then, then you're always limited to what you've got, the, the, how, how you're going to do it what resources you have or don't have. Uh, I, I just think that resources, what you have or don't have, should never play into it. I've learned that in my own organization of, of running a nonprofit for 20-something years. There's a lot of years I didn't have the cash because we as Americans oftentimes think in terms of, of I'm going to do things based on the money I have. But if you look at Scripture, it's not always based on the money someone has because God might provide in a different way. I'll give you, for instance, when Jesus was getting ready for the uh, to, for Passover and to ride in on a donkey. Remember, he didn't have a donkey. He didn't have money for a donkey. I mean, he may have did, but he told his disciple, go to so-and-so and say the Lord needs it, and he's going to give you the donkey. Or if you recall, when the disciples needed money to pay the taxes, right, the Roman taxes, and Jesus said, go look in the fish, the mouth of a, of a <laughs> fish, and there's a coin sitting there. I mean, that's crazy thinking today's terms, but so often we think in terms of, I don't have the dollar resources to do what God's called me to do. That's the wrong way to look at it because God oftentimes provides in other ways. And just this singular dollar focus determining what we do is really an American and Western way of thinking. Um, I learned from my friend Bill Graining who, who runs the Alive Festival in Ohio, uh, big Christian festival, a tremendous fun event, but also a deeply spiritual event. And I've been involved with Bill on that a few times and, what Bill taught me was trade things, you know, give to other people and then they help you back and uh, don't let everything be dictated by the dollar. Instead, see how God's can provide in other ways. And I saw him, I've seen him do that in my own ministry more times than, than probably I've seen him provide dollars, actually. Um, another is, is a vision based on the leader. Hey, this guy can really preach, so I'm going to build everything around him. Or we've got this person that's in, you know, a great youth pastor and he's great with events, so let's build these big, massive events. Well, then when that guy leaves, it's all over with, right? Yeah. Um, 
values, purposes, nothing wrong with that, but oftentimes that determines our vision. People say, well, let's have a purpose statement or here's our values that form out who we are or shape us who we are. That needs to play a part of it, but that doesn't give the vision, see. That gives how we're going to do it and how we're going to act to get there, but it doesn't dictate where we are going, what God wants us to do. So to me, all of those are sources of vision, but I think the real biblical means is where we see in, in Proverbs 29, 18, where it says, without vision, the people perish. And it's interesting, Jordan, because the word vision there is it's not vision as in what I'm going to see. Hey, here's the vision for the country. Here's a vision for my company, whatever. Instead, it's the word vision there in the Hebrew, Proverbs 29, 18 again, without vision, the people perish. The word actually is without revelation the mm. people perish, right? Vision is what man ultimately can see. And I, I wrote a note, I want to make sure I read this, this is a Henry Blackberry quote. Vision is something people produce. Revelation is something people receive. So to get vision, you've got to hear from God and pray to God, let God pour in so that then he can lead me out. Instead, I think we have to conjure up in our mind, this guy's doing it this way, Here's what money we have. Here's what we did in the past. Here's who our, our personnel are. Here's our values. And we let all these things turn around. Or, man, I want to be that. I want to be noted. So then we let ego get in the way. And next thing you know, we have a man-made vision in the name of God. Mm, that's, yeah. Right? We're experts are coming out, of coming out with vision based on, you know, in Jesus' name. My question is, what's God wanting? You know, anybody watching this video, what's God wanting to do in your life? What's the vision God has for you individually? What's the vision for your family? What's the vision for where you work, for your church, for your organization, where the, the place God has you to serve? What's the vision there? And, and that takes hard work. It's getting before God without revelation that people perish. Again, Blackwood's quote, vision is something people produce. Revelation is something people receive. So we won't be in the receiving business from God so then he can give us the vision to lead out. Ultimately, is how that works. One thing that really comes to mind is I, a buddy of mine, Chris Floyd, says, uh, said to me once, if you're wrong in the way you're right, then you're wrong and you're not right. And when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, um, if you're wrong in the way you approach your vision, if you mm -hmm. think what you're doing is right, because you're putting this, this fake persona on it, but really, you think you're right, but it's wrong. That the essential of everything you're saying is we need to make sure that our vision's being based off of God. Our vision's being based off of our faith. Would that? Yeah, and it goes back to statement? what we talked about in the earlier video, too, is what's the purpose? If it's to make disciples, the vision has to fuel that. And the how and the what, and all of that fuels that one vision. Hmm. It's, like, it's almost like we get bored and have ADD where we try to do everything. And when you try to do everything... Even if it's a, it's right, there's a, there, I guess what I'm saying is there's a difference between good and God. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? Definitely. There's Definitely. a whole bunch of good work in the name of Jesus being done. My question is, where's the God work that he wants done? And that's where we have to get before him. It's not easy to be a leader. You have to get before him and let him teach, let him show, and, uh, and not be doing, you know, the wrong things uh, in the name of Christ. Because it's good work. It's going to be God's work. So anyway, that's it. That's great. Well, thank you again so much, Dr. Savage. Um, I pray that as, as leaders, future, future leaders, that we can put our face down and look towards God and, and make sure that he's leading us instead of our own selfish desires. He is our source. If he's not, then something else is leading us. But something's going to be our source. Something else is going to be our inspiration. Something's going to be our what we follow. And it's either going to be God fully or... Um, or it's going to be God partially, or it's going to be not God at all. And uh, and we just need to be cognizant of that it's got to be fully Him, starting the day, ending the day, and throughout the day with Him. We can't compartmentalize our faith, and the vision comes from Him. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for those words of wisdom, sir.